Welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. Deep within the intricate web of the internet, where data streams flow like rivers in the dark, something is stirring. It's a subtle shift, a barely perceptible tremor in the digital landscape. This isn't happening in the bright, well-lit spaces of the web, but in the deep, unseen corners of the internet. Places where protocols whisper and algorithms dance in the shadows. It's a phenomenon that's both fascinating and unsettling. It's not a lone hacker, toiling away in isolation, or a single brilliantly crafted piece of malicious code causing havoc. It's something far more pervasive, more systemic. It's a new kind of power, a force multiplier in the digital realm, and the most unsettling part? It's becoming increasingly accessible to anyone with a computer and an internet connection. The barriers to entry are crumbling. Enter the all-in-one hacking toolkit. A collection of software, scripts, and utilities designed to probe, test, and sometimes exploit digital systems. These aren't underground tools traded in the dark corners of the web. They are often marketed as a legitimate product downloadable by anyone, often with a slick user interface and extensive documentation. They come promising to unlock digital secrets, to reveal the inner workings of complex systems, and to provide insights into vulnerabilities that might otherwise remain hidden. These toolkits are spreading quietly, like seeds carried on the wind, finding fertile ground in the minds of curious users and those with more malicious intent. They're discussed in online forums and tech communities, often with a mix of excitement and trepidation. Users share tips, techniques, and warnings about the potential consequences of wielding such power. Admired for their technical prowess, for their ability to dissect and understand complex systems, and feared in equal measure for the potential damage they could inflict in the wrong hands. The line between ethical hacking and malicious activity is becoming increasingly blurred, Imagine a single key, a master key of sorts. A key that could test every lock in your city, probing for weaknesses, identifying vulnerabilities, and potentially unlocking any door. That's the promise and the peril of these digital suites. They offer a comprehensive set of tools for exploring the digital landscape. They blur the line between security and vulnerability, between ethical exploration and malicious exploitation. They are democratizing power distributing capabilities that were once reserved for elite government agencies, specialized security firms, and sophisticated cyber criminals. The playing field is leveling, but not necessarily in a way that makes us safer. Their allure is not in flashy marketing or public endorsements, but in their secrecy, in the promise of hidden knowledge and untapped potential. You hear about them in whispers, in hushed tones in online forums, not in loud advertisements. They represent forbidden knowledge, a glimpse behind the curtain of our digital world. A shortcut to understanding the intricate machinery of our digital world, offering insights into how systems work, and more importantly, how they can be broken. But with every new user, with every download and installation, the risk of misuse grows exponentially. The potential for harm increases as these tools become more widespread. And the whispers in the wires, the subtle hum of data flowing through the network, become warnings, signals of potential danger lurking just beneath the surface. Beneath our convenient digital lives, the seamless experience of online shopping, social media, and instant communication lies a fragile architecture, a complex web of interconnected systems that are vulnerable to attack. And these toolkits are a stark reminder of that fragility a constant reminder that our digital world is not as secure as we might believe. They're a testament to human ingenuity, to our ability to create powerful tools that can shape the world around us, and a warning about human nature, about our capacity for both great good and great evil. The tools themselves are neutral. It's the intent of the user that determines their impact. The story isn't just about technology, about lines of code and complex algorithms. It's about the choices we make, the decisions we face as we navigate this increasingly complex digital landscape. And the trust we place in our digital world, the faith we have in the systems that underpin our modern lives. The real mystery, the question that hangs in the air like a digital ghost, is what happens when everyone has access to this power. 
What kind of world will we create when the tools to unlock digital secrets are available to all? So what exactly are we looking at here? What is this thing? This so-called all-in-one hacking toolkit? Is it some kind of magic bullet for digital mayhem? Or is it something more nuanced, more complex? Forget Hollywood's frantic typing and the exaggerated drama we often see on screen. This isn't chaos. This is organized, easily accessible, and frankly, unsettling in its simplicity. It's a streamlined approach to a complex problem. Think of it less like a single weapon and more like a digital Swiss army knife. A carefully curated bundle of specialized programs designed for testing, probing, and meticulously analyzing networks. Each tool has a specific purpose, a specific function. With a deceptively simple and user-friendly interface, it takes incredibly complex operations and distills them into simple point-and-click tasks. No coding expertise required. One tool diligently scans networks, mapping out its architecture and identifying potential weak points. Another relentlessly attempts to crack passwords, exposing vulnerabilities in authentication systems. And a third silently intercepts data, monitoring network traffic and capturing sensitive information. Together, they methodically probe every conceivable angle of a system's defenses, searching for the slightest crack in the armor. In the past, assembling and effectively using these kinds of tools required a high level of expertise, accessible only to seasoned professionals. Now with this toolkit, virtually anyone can wield this power. This ease of use undoubtedly empowers defenders, allowing them to quickly identify and patch vulnerabilities, but it also significantly lowers the bar for attackers. The toolkit itself is inherently neutral. Its ultimate impact depends entirely on who wields it and what their intentions are. In the wrong hands, this isn't just a simple test kit or a learning tool. It transforms into a powerful battering ram capable of inflicting serious damage. Here's the twist, a critical piece of information that might just change your perspective on these powerful tools. Despite their potential for misuse, these toolkits are, surprisingly, legal to own and download in most places around the world. The legality is a key factor in their widespread availability. Why is this the case? Because fundamentally, they're designed and intended for use by cybersecurity professionals, not by individuals with malicious intent or criminal motivations. Their main purpose, their core function, is penetration testing. That is, authorized, simulated attacks designed to proactively find and fix vulnerabilities within a system before actual malicious actors can exploit them. Ethical hackers, security researchers, and other professionals use these tools, always with explicit permission from the system owners. They are essentially acting like attackers, but with a crucial difference. They're doing it to strengthen defenses and improve overall security posture. The legality hinges entirely on consent. Think of it this way. It's the fundamental difference between a locksmith professionally testing the security of your locks with your consent and a burglar forcibly breaking in to steal your valuables. The tool itself is the same in both scenarios. It's the intent behind its use and the presence of explicit permission that makes all the difference. That's precisely why you'll commonly find these toolkits readily available on public platforms like GitHub and other open source repositories. They're considered a vital part of a global collaborative effort to continuously improve cybersecurity practices and standards worldwide. These tools are actively used by security researchers, academic institutions, and students alike for learning, research, and development purposes. This open access approach helps ensure that defenders and security professionals aren't unfairly outgunned or disadvantaged by attackers who might already possess similar capabilities. However, the moment you decide to use any of these toolkits without explicit authorization or for purposes other than legitimate security testing, it instantly transforms from a security tool into a weapon, and its use becomes a serious crime with significant legal consequences. The law, therefore, doesn't primarily judge the tool itself or its inherent capabilities, but rather it focuses on how and more importantly, why the tool is being used in any given situation. In the right, skilled, and ethical hands, these toolkits are undoubtedly a powerful force for good in the ongoing battle to secure our digital world. Every tool for good has a shadow. Misuse the creators can't control.
the all-in-one toolkit's power and simplicity make it dangerous in the wrong hands. With a few clicks, a user can launch attacks that once required deep expertise. The psychological distance of digital attacks makes consequences feel unreal, emboldening bad actors. From ransomware to cyberbullying, the toolkit lowers the skill barrier for causing real harm. In the hands of amateurs, it's a digital grenade, simple to use, devastating in effect. For students, these dangers are close to home. School networks connect everything, grades, personal info, exam papers. A toolkit makes mapping and attacking these systems dangerously easy. Public Wi-Fi is another weak spot. A toolkit can intercept unencrypted data, exposing passwords and private messages. Social media accounts are prime targets. Toolkits can create fake login pages to steal credentials. The consequences, altered grades, stolen data, cyberbullying, and reputational damage. The toolkit doesn't create bullies, but it gives them powerful anonymous tools. A moment of poor judgment can become a life-altering incident. The digital schoolyard is more dangerous than ever. Not all hackers are the same. Their ethics and permission set them apart. White hats are ethical hackers using toolkits with consent to find and fix security flaws. They're the defenders hired to think like attackers and protect data. Black hats use the same tools for illegal, malicious purposes motivated by profit chaos or revenge. Gray hats operate in the murky middle, good intentions, but unauthorized actions. The difference isn't the tool, but permission and intent. Understanding these roles is crucial. The same toolkit can protect or destroy. In cybersecurity, context is everything. The line between hero and villain is drawn by consent. The law is clear. Owning a toolkit is legal. Using it without permission is not. In the US, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act makes unauthorized access a federal crime. Even scanning your school's network without consent can be a violation. Penalties are severe fines prison, and a criminal record. Similar laws exist worldwide, drawing a bright line between ethical testing and illegal hacking. For students, the ease of these toolkits can make hacking seem trivial, but the consequences are real and lasting. Pranks like password cracking or denial of service attacks are crimes, not harmless fun. The law is the ultimate boundary cross it, and your future is at risk. Know where the line is and don't cross it. In a world of powerful hacking tools, passive defense isn't enough. Start with strong, unique passwords for every account. Use a password manager. Avoid public Wi-Fi for sensitive tasks. If you must use it, connect through a VPN. Enable two-factor authentication everywhere. It's a second lock most attackers can't bypass. Stay alert for phishing attempts and keep your software updated. Awareness is your armor. Understanding the risks is your first defense. Don't trust every link or message, even from friends. Security is a habit, not a one-time fix. The more you know, the safer you are. In this digital landscape, vigilance is survival. We're at a crossroads. Hacking toolkits are shifting the balance of power online. Soon, AI-driven tools will make attacks even easier and more automated. Digital literacy must become as essential as reading or math. Security education is urgent for schools, parents, and individuals. We must teach not just opportunity, but risk and responsibility. The suspense isn't in the technology, but in how we respond. Will we become prey, or will we build a culture of security and awareness? Your safety depends on your choices, strong passwords, secure networks, and constant vigilance. The most powerful tool is knowledge, the ability to defend, not attack. The future is unwritten, and you hold the pen.